Hey guys, what's up? It is episode 100. Believe you, it or not. If you can believe it or not, it is 100. Um, yeah, so this is a pretty crazy journey. Uh, <laughs> that was so weird. <laughs> It's, it's from an old TV show. Anyway, a um, hundred episodes of Coffee is for Closers. I, I would love you guys to look back on our first episodes. They were absolute trash. We did them on Please Zoom. Please don't. We had terrible microphones, terrible speakers. We were doing- And terrible knowledge. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But we had chutzpah. Uh, I think we were doing like maybe $20,000 a month when we started that podcast. Yeah. We would have been at about 50 to 60, I think. Yeah, maybe. Who knows? Who knows? We've been going for a while. If, Two years, man. If we watched the episode, it might tell us because we could have been like, can you believe it? Can you $20, believe it? $20,000. We're killing it. Kill I remember reading our first 50. Anyway, we'll talk about that. So what we're going to do today is we're going to go over back what we've learned over the last uh, two years, roughly, uh, how things have changed. Obviously, you can see things have changed. The fact that you're watching this in 4K with incredible audio and video. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and, and yeah, so stay tuned if you want to hear the journey of how we've not only grown a podcast to tens of thousands of downloads per month, we've managed to grow a couple of- 20,000 a month. Yeah. Now. Now. Yeah. Twenties of thousands a month. <laughs> so <laughs> and, thank uh, you to the four people that put that on repeat. It's, it's brilliant. Yeah, exactly. Right. All the VAs that we pay to just constantly <laughs> download is really paying off. Um, so yeah, uh, we managed to build uh, a couple of eight figure businesses. We've managed to uh, build a couple of seven figure businesses. We just launched a business and we got it up to a hundred thousand dollar month run rate in 14 days, uh, good. which is, which is not bad. Um, so yeah, we're going to talk about all that and what we've learned. Go Some of the funnest things over the past hundred episodes. Um, some of the favorite things and some interesting things. Exactly. Some bad things, maybe. We'll, we'll see how we go. Yeah, so cue the intro. If you listen to this podcast, you will make your first million within three years. I'm going to repeat that. You will make a million dollars within three years of the first episode you listen to. We don't want pikers. We're not here to save the manatees. We're here to make podcasts. You really want this. You listen and review. Put that coffee down. All right, guys. So it's our 100th episode. Uh, so Jimmy Jam, what has been what has been some of the the watershed moments, if you will, the highlights and lowlights of? I think um, the power moves. Let's let's talk about the power moves. Let's talk about your headphones. <laughs> You know, let, let's let talk about them. Why don't you tell the story? Well, my headphones are better simply because I'm better. I think that, no. So uh, my friend, Pat, who's a very good friend of mine who now also works with us in a, like a content curation capacity. He helped to set up this studio because it's kind of his thing. And he got me better headphones than he got you as a power move on me on you. Interesting. Well, if you need someone to do power moves on your behalf, then oh, that's savage. okay. Also, like if you need that, to make your miserable life feel better about yourself, then it's okay. I'll help you out. It's fair enough. I appreciate but, that. But speaking of that, <laughs> you're an idiot. Why? Because I switched the headphones. No! <laughs> no! <laughs> and, no! And, whoosh, just real. <laughs> ah! <laughs> you fucking loser with your peasant headphones. <laughs> and, and that's how you set a man up, guys. <laughs> Yeah, well played. So anyway, thank you for being here. That's been um, my favorite part of the hundred episodes because yeah. that could not have went any better. They are not quite as comfortable. <laughs> these these are the ear cups are a bit smaller. Anyway, yeah, that's and I have very small head. ears. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. Well, there you go. Well done. Looks like uh, looks like you win. You win this round, sir. Um, yeah. So for for the, for those of you who don't know who we are and what we do, and this is our one episode. Uh, we are a done-for-you sales company, a done-for-you marketing company, a done-for-you systems and operations company, and uh, a few other things. We've predominantly been known in the sales space, being sales trainers, and we have a sales training department, uh, which is a separate company, which we do with a guy called Jeremy Miner, who's the world's uh, premier sales trainer. Um, and, and essentially, over the past couple of years, uh, it started off with me and James running a mm. done-for-you fitness sales company, where... Like basically I would do the sales, James would do some of the sales, but James would handle all the client onboarding, all the admin, all like the lead. <laughs> all the little, really. Well, it was just the stuff to, you know, we, we sort of hit a point because you were good at sales, but we hit a point where I was getting really good at sales yeah. in that particular thing. Shit compared to what I am now, but good at sales in general. Like where it made more sense for me to just spend all my time on the phones and for you to yeah. organize everything behind it. And it was 
um, easier to find salespeople than people that can run a business. So I'm just like, okay, I guess I do this now. Yeah. And it's actually really funny because like we have such a big team now. Mm. And like I was on the call the other day when we had the Spencer explaining all the click up builds and everything like that. Uh, Spencer Burnett is, is sort of like one of our operational heads and he does all the infrastructure builds out for us and the companies that we work mm-hmm. with so we can have extremely efficient systems and run really, really well and have very, very good communication um, where nothing gets dropped in project management, yep. et cetera. Um, I had a project manager as well. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. But it's really funny because I was like, oh man, like me and James just did all of these things. <laughs> Like for a long time and you way more than me. Yeah. Um, well, it's funny. Like as a progression, like I built systems that got us to a certain level that were good enough until you learn more like <laughs> skills and like this doesn't make sense anymore. And we outgrew those systems many times. Then we bring on Blint to be like, hey, like that's the depth of my knowledge. I can't do anything further. Yeah. You make some shit now. Um, and then I draw little pictures and go, I want it to look like this. I want it to do this. Go make it. Yeah. And then we had that computer scientist for a while that we used to get to outsource work. Yeah. It was great. But we could never get that crap to work though. Yeah. It just it broke. Hard. It broke easily. Yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then um, now we got Spencer like refining that to an actual level for that next level infrastructure of scale. Yeah. Like the nine figure infrastructure. Yeah. Right. So, so yeah, it's just really interesting because the team is getting so big and we're doing so many interesting things and, you know, we're getting hit up by lots of different types of industries to do sales, to train sales, to mm. do marketing, et cetera. Cause like our marketing company focuses predominantly on, on done for you Facebook group stuff, yep. right. Of which we've figured out a system of how to scale and, and get significant revenue and you from one to $500,000 a month, depending on how big the ticket size is from a Facebook group, which is not insignificant. Right. It's a but good little, um, secondary secondary marketing source if you're doing a whole bunch of Facebook ads, YouTube ads, it's a great add-on. Yeah. So there's there's so many people now and doing so many things. That it's just like I was having this real reflection moment. I was like, two years ago it was me and you. We had Marco. Are we in year three now? I think so. Technically we started in like September of twenty nineteen. Yeah, okay. So we'd be coming up to three years September. Yeah. My math is a bit off. Yeah. So, um, but we didn't start doing high ticket until like December of, Mm. I think, no, I think it was like October. I started selling for game changers. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Sounds about right. Yeah. So, so anyway, we had like, we had a a little fitness business and then I was fitness sales sniper. And then, so we've been doing that for a while. If we count fitness sales sniper, we've been going since like the, like the beginning of 2019. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. But that was like, we, we changed models quite quickly. So we were doing sales for gyms and it really escalated quickly. Like it was very surprising. Yeah. But it, we shut down uh, that business because it wasn't, it was set up on just what we already had. And then we're like, oh, you know what? We actually need to create a company. Let's create a company. And that's when it transitioned from fitness sales sniper to sales sniper. Exactly. And yeah. we were still doing fitness stuff, but, but like then we hit a point when we started getting into like the marketing companies and some of the more high ticket space. And then we realized like the commissions, like we were making like 22 bucks a sale for some of those. It wasn't a lot. Like, and we we were charging a base of seven fifty a week, I think. So it was like 3000 a month base um, of which a lot of it would go to the sales rep. Right. Um, And then, so we were making a bit of money, but it was weird and it was very difficult to fulfill on because the marketing was so inconsistent. You know, um, but we sold the living crap out of a lot of gym memberships. And then we even, we used a recruiter, a coaching sales recruiter to get us some sales reps who were apparently killers and they could not close a door. Yeah. Like no. they could not, they were guys who were like, these are million dollar closers. I thought that meant they were million dollar commission earners or they'd done seven figures in selling in a single year. I did not realize that was like a lifetime contract value, which is basically worthless. Right, a seven-figure close. Like it was what yeah. a waste of time. But they I mean, could not close a ninety-seven dollars fitness offer to save the life. They they weren't that good, and I'll I'll give them some credit. Those offers are hard to sell, uh, particularly when like there was no marketing dialed in. They were calling lead lists. Like it's except Jimmy was selling the living bejesus out of them at the same time. Yeah, but he also couldn't sell them for some of the other gyms because of location and thing. Like he did yeah. attempt and fail. So you got to give him a little bit of credit that it, it was hard. Um, I agree. It was difficult. We probably didn't have any infrastructure to support them. We had no way to train them to make them good. 
we had no scripts. It was just like, hey, go sell this. No, no. At that time, did we? we did okay. have scripts. Yeah, okay. I did have training. But right down a little like mini portal that yeah, I put maybe. together on G Drive. And then what I had is I would I would train them all one on one. Mm. And then I wrote the script. I gave them the scripts and stuff like that. Now, listen, the scripts weren't great, but listen, I was selling a lot of fitness for that script. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know what I mean. But it's just, it's a very different thing. Going from ROI to non-ROI is difficult. That's why you should start with non-ROI and move up. I, I guess my question is, uh, do you think now, if we bring those same sales reps in and we put them in our infrastructure, we could make them good? I think they'd have a high chance. Yeah, I think they'd have a much better chance. Yeah. And listen, it wasn't that like, the, I'm sure they could sell business coaching programs, like, but like selling fitness is difficult. Mm. Do you know what I mean? But anyway, then we started getting into more of the high ticket space and that's kind of where we really started to shine and we started like getting marketing companies or business coaching companies. And it all really changed when I secured a business coaching gig where I was the main sales guy. And at that time we had, we had, yeah, we had Marco. It was me, you and Marco. That was the whole, and then a couple of like rando sales guys. Yeah, we, had, we had Jimmy, a couple of guys from the gyms that we worked at as well. Yeah. Which one of them has actually just come back on board. You yeah. Yeah, Scotty. Yeah. 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 Look forward to seeing you, Scotty. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, so yeah, like uh, we had that. And then from there, like I, I ended up sort of doing very well on the business coaching offer because it was so easy to sell compared mm -hmm. to fitness. And it was $2,000 commission per sale because it was a 30K offer. Yeah. So I was getting two grand. So what's that like uh, 8%, 7%, something like that. So, but I was getting it up front. That was the good bit. Yeah. So we'd get it up front. But it was a lower commission than what you'd usually get. You yeah. know what I mean? Constingent on we collected X amount of yeah, I had, yeah, to, yeah. They had to I had to do two months. So I got half. I got a thousand at the right. sale and a thousand sixty days later, I think, if they did the full time. Mm -hmm. And about seventy or sixty percent of the people went the whole way through. So yeah. it ended up being like fifteen hundred bucks. I think, I think if I recall, there was like a um, sixty day or ninety day love it or leave it. Yeah, we'd take a thousand bucks on the upfront. And then if they went through the love it or leave it, we would either not get another thousand or take another thousand. Exactly. So it was pretty good. It was a yeah. fair structure. I was fine yeah. with it. But I made like uh, six sales in the first week. Mm -hmm. um, and so like we killed the game, made 12 grand, quote unquote, collected six, but then, you know, made 12 in revenue type thing. Yeah. And then I was like, oh, the crap. Like, this is it. This is the game. And then me and you decided to focus more on that. And then I was like, well, how do we do this? Because um, we just didn't know. It was I had no idea how to get leads. And I still don't. I, like I was going through our leads that we get. If you go to crushsales.net, then you can apply to work with us. And that goes through to a form. I was going through. There was 24 applications that we had not acknowledged. Sounds about right. Yeah. <laughs> so if you have tried to work with us, um, chances are we missed it. And um uh, Apply again. We'll get to you. Yeah. Yeah. I responded to a few of them by email like like late last night. I was like, oh, well, some of these businesses are pretty good. One of them is doing seven and a half million a month. Nice. But yeah, so we, we kind of went down the weeds. I then joined the sales mentor program, not their coaching program, but like that sales challenge. It is. Sales mentor is no longer a thing, I don't think. I think in a business not called Seventh Level came along and kind of smashed. <laughs> nah, I, I think it's shut down. I don't, I can't confirm or deny that, but I think it is. Um, maybe. Yeah. So I went in there and then they had a thing called the golden gorilla, which was like every week you had to submit your numbers and it was close rate, cash collected contract value. Right. And it was whoever got the highest amount won the golden gorilla. And I won it every single week. And I was in two challenges back to back and I won, I believe it was seven out of eight of them. Old King Kong over here. Yeah. But they actually called me on the last one and said, we can't give it to you because then you've got to love them. I said, I don't care. I was just like, it's not a real thing. Maybe you should train people better. I was just like, you know, and I was like, you know, it's not a real thing. <laughs> like this, I don't get anything for this. Um, anyway, they were super nice. They actually offered me a job yeah, okay. uh, of which um, we considered taking because we thought it would be good. But they had, they had to work US time zones. And I was like, that's non-negotiable. Like, yeah. give me leads and I'll sell them. But if you want me to like be at meetings at two o'clock in the morning, it's like, I have kids. They're way more important than, than some sales gig. But then like, because I was posting such good numbers and I was really new to it and I, I wasn't that good if I'm perfectly honest, but everybody in that challenge was trash. Um, to be perfectly fair, they just weren't very good and their offers weren't that good. I was on a, I was on a good offer and it was a high ticket. It was 30 K 
So like my contract value was just crushing everybody because I was making like five sales a week, which is 150,000 contract value every week. In one of the weeks, I sold 15 people, right? So I ended up having these crazy numbers and then that kind of got a name for me. And then Eli reached out and was like, hey man, you're killing the game. And I was oh, like, that's, yeah, that's how we met Eli. Yeah. And then, so I ended up becoming like mates with Eli and then we started doing stuff back and forth and working with him a little bit. And then that kind of introduced me to a lot of other people. And then that's how it all kind of snowballed. Yeah, he's a, he's a great networker. Eli. Yeah, he's a good dude, man. I like yeah, Eli. Great guy. Yeah. No, well, that's a little bit of history. You want to keep going through the history or want to? Yeah. From, from there, we just started like, we just were like, I think that it, kind of, it was weird, right? Because the way that we get clients and leads is through content. Like we're doing a podcast right now. This podcast will be split up into a YouTube video, a podcast, some reels, some shorts on YouTube probably, and maybe even some TikToks, right? And we just post content everywhere always. It's, it's funny. I had a, um, let's call it an informative discussion with the business coach on our Facebook the other day, where I think he said, your business, uh, I mean, I'll probably butcher the words that he said and make him sound like an idiot, but it's not intentional. I think he said, if you um, receive your business uh, grows by 50, you get 50% or more of your leads come through referrals. Like it's, it's not a business. And I just went, oh yeah, I heavily disagree. <laughs> I go, well, we get significantly more than 50% of our clients through referrals. Yeah, absolutely. Or through word of mouth in the industry that are then validated by other people that they've spoken to. And uh, I was just like, I don't think you understand business well enough to, to say that. Because if you're a coach, I would agree because you can't get the volume. I, exactly. We are not a... <sighs> I agreed in context if you're talking about very specific niches and subclasses of business. And I was like, okay, what about um, high-end wealth managers, corporate lawyers that will not take on clients unless they're validated by referral? I go, the, but the, the fact you don't understand that you're not, you're not a, business, to be a coach. business coach. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I didn't say that. I just said, that was a great disgrace. <laughs> oh, it just, that stuff makes me so mad because it's like, I mean, it's stupid to be mad at something like that, to be fair. Like that is ridiculous. Yeah. I will, I will. But it's just like, you call yourself a business coach, but you clearly know nothing about business because you think everyone else is a coach. Or you're smart enough that you've generated a whole bunch of like discussion on your post by being controversial. And now you can engage in conversations with people. Like I'll give you an example of this, right? Um, Grand Cardone put up this post, um, took a terrible photo of one of his building complexes. Horrible photo, right? You're at that level, you would expect people to get professional photographers to make the building you're trying to sell and rent out look great. Riddled with spelling errors. And people are coming on it going, oh, this guy's such a dickhead. Thanks for the free. Can't spell. Can't Thanks for the this. cheap advertising. I'm just sitting there going, no, you guys are just like, you're all sales guys, business guys. Sitting on this dude. But what you don't realize is he's so much smarter than you. He knows it's controversial. He knows it's going to drive engagement. There is no way that guy doesn't choose those or have a team that chooses those pitches specifically, forcefully puts those specific spelling errors in knowing that every time he does it, he drives engagement and hate, which push it out to an audience, which is free. Advertising. Do you remember when he did the vacation day meme? He said, I support the government in mandating vacations yeah. for everybody. Yeah. And people lost it. People lost it because they didn't read it. They just assumed vaccine. And then people were like, murp, 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 murp. and it's like, <laughs> it's like, you're just not smart enough to understand what's happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not at that level. I would doubt that guy did that. But anyway, like, uh, we'll, no, no. We'll, we'll kind of There's get back no way he does that. He has a team. You don't get to that level where you spend the time doing Oh, that. no. Cr Grant, I agree. This yeah. business coach dude who's saying you can't win off referrals. It's like, I would say, yeah, I would say 80% of the people that we sign are from referral because we ask for referrals like an annoying amount. The other 20% come directly to us. Yeah. Like, we get a lot. Yeah. So, okay. Lead volume, we get more coming to us than what we do, right? Referrals. However, the people that we sign, the vast majority is referrals yeah. compared to because we have to have such a stringent vetting process mm -hmm. that like from 50 applications, we can really only take on four or five. Yeah. 
Um, it's it, it's just because like there have to be a model that suits outside source, like uh, out, outside sales. There's also other business that we have that are 100 percent referral based because we refer them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like you know, one, I, of, I, one I, of them did a hundred thousand dollars in 14 days of opening. Yeah, that was all referral, only referral. Yeah, and that's recurring revenue. Yeah, so that's um, over a million dollars. Anyway, we can we can get into that. So so well, you know. We kept sort of going and then from that, everything kind of spun out of control, but we've been really consistent with content. And my, my thought was, and I think we've had this conversation many times behind closed doors, if everybody associates us and like my face, but our brand, yeah, right? With, if you know of these people, you will get better at sales for free and we don't sell sales coaching, then everyone will just think of us as the people to go to for sales. Yeah. And I think in two years, we have grabbed a lot of market share, uh-huh. right? Very quickly and been able to establish ourselves as an expert in the industry that we are in, right? By just doing really good quality content and generally trying to like advance the industry. And also backing it up with results. Yeah, we get good results and we get referrals and testimonials, et cetera, et cetera. Right. But I think like there is such an element. People always come to me like, how do I get gigs as a sales guy? I'm like, well, first of all, be a good sales guy and you're never going to have that problem. Yeah. But second of all, like you have to let people know that you're good at sales and you can't just say it. You have to prove it. Mm-hmm. And without going, give me 10 leads and I'll make you three sales, you kind of have to show your prowess in other ways. Yep. Uh, and like when we started, everything that I did was on an iPhone and I edited it on my phone and I posted it. Then, we made enough money to where I bought like a Sony A6400, right? Some good headphones. Yep. So like, which is a pretty cheap camera, not bad, but good enough. Then I started shooting on them. Then we made enough money to get a, a video editor in the Ukraine. I'm not sure. Oh, is he in the Ukraine? Is he okay? Andrich? Was he in the Ukraine or was he in somewhere near there? Should send him a message. I might send him a message. Yeah. Anyway, he doesn't work with us anymore, but, but yeah. So, and then from there now... This is being shot on a Sony FX3 cinema camera and a Sony A7S3 right there down down the barrel, right? That's the vertical camera to get the reels from. That's the camera that shoots in cinema quality to get the the big one, right? And we're using these are custom and that's made sure microphones. Camera. Yep, yep. These are custom made microphones, the Rodecaster, all this kind of stuff, right? And it's all just been like a gradual progression that we've established over the over the last couple of years. Because we've been really consistent with content and we've like made a conscious effort to try and give as much out. And then we hope that the re- lower reciprocity kicks in and yep. that we get a lot back. Absolutely. I think um, the more you put out, the more you get in return eventually yeah. down the track. I, I really believe that. I think like my, like whenever, you know, it frustrates me when we have like clients because we have a lot of done for you sales clients. And this is one of the reasons why we started Sniper Media, right? Because like Sniper Media is about Facebook group, uh, email copy. So uh, sales copy, email copy, Facebook group copy, and Facebook group growth and setting and monetization plus ads. But in order to do that effectively, like you need good content. You need good content, not only in the group, but outside of the group to build audiences, right? To then put people into the group yeah. for cheap. Because you can't just go out to a cold audience and say, join a Facebook group because no one cares. Yeah. I, or you can and you just bring in trash leads. Yeah, or it's really expensive as well. Yeah. But um, we have to audit uh, people's content when they before they sign up because yeah. if their content isn't at a level, none of our strategy works. We can't take it on. Yeah, but also like it then like allows us to say to a client and go, "You need to do content. Like if you're gonna be, like if you're gonna be out there wanting, like you have to give people something because like er- like everyone these days is being nurtured by six different companies." Mm-hmm. So how do you stand out from that? You stand out from that by nurturing them more, by giving more, by giving away stuff for free, by like being known as the people and the company that give you stuff. By sponsoring the event that all your clients go to. How's this for an idea? Skyrider. Right out the front, crushsales.net. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. 100%. <laughs> No, we're going to do a lot of stuff. We're going to, yeah, I'm going to artificially take over that place. It'll be hilarious. But yeah, we'll we'll have a plan. I mean, it might be outside right now. You should quickly go and check. Yeah. Crush sales on that. If you want to double your sales. Yeah, I wrote it on the roof up there. Hello. You looked. (laughs) So mature. 
hates mature hay. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, we started Sniper Media because like there was such a lack of consistency in the marketing of a lot of our clients because they were single channel marketing. They were like heavily relying on Facebook or on YouTube or on Google. And it's like, guys, in order to make this a real thing with longevity, you need Facebook, Instagram, Google, LinkedIn. You need all of them, right? Yeah. So like at least what we can do is we can go, let's leverage your email list. Let's leverage a Facebook group. We'll tell you what content to do and then we'll go for it. And then from there, it creates more consistency for our sales guys. The sales guys can dial themselves in better. Then we can inevitably break the business and then we can sell people into sniper operations, which is a full infrastructure build out to systemize the company. So it's a beautiful, beautiful self-licking ice cream, uh, which is sort of where we're at today um, in terms of the capabilities of the company. But I really do feel like everything is off the back of quality content. Mm. Like we, we do call to actions on my Facebook or whatever, man, we get crazy responses. Yep. And I'm like always shocked and humbled as to how interested people are from hearing what we have to say. Speaking of that, um, uh, humbled, like as it is the hundredth episode, what are some of like the best experiences you've had? Cause I know that I was humbled when I went to the retreat, then you went over to the States. Let's talk about some of the best things that's, that's happened, like outside of business success. Yeah. I think meeting the team in the U.S. obviously only got to meet a small contingent. Uh, it was pretty cool and taking them all. I got a box at the Phoenix Suns game. And, you know, I, I think like being able to do that, considering how difficult it was for us at the start and like how tight it was. And like when we started, when when I started Fitness Sales Sniper, because it was me for like the first two weeks. And then I mm. was like, oh, I'm not going to be able to do this without somebody. So I asked you, I think I had four grand in the bank. You know what I mean? Like that box cost, I don't know, like 11 grand or something yeah. for the night. Private jet. You know? Yeah, we got a private jet as well. <laughs> yeah. What yeah. Do, what did we spend on that boat? Uh, 50. Uh, okay. Yeah. I thought which, it was more like 100. But which one? It was 100. Which one? Taking the gifts. Yeah. Which one? Good point. Yeah. So it's usually you're anywhere between 35 and 50 per boat trip. Yeah. But, um, but anyway, like all that stuff is fun. But I think like, I think like the coolest part was seeing, a group of people that have come together and become so close personally, yep. professionally, and they seem to be united under a single banner. And it's because of what we've done. And it's really, really odd. Yeah. yeah and that's um, just testament to building a, a culture specifically for, yeah. for that purpose or building a business in what you want. Right. So like we, we didn't want to come into work and have a corporate structure where it's like you report to this person, report to this person. Wanted to come into a business where it was like for you being back in the army with your mates. Yeah. And for me, like being on a team with like a, a footy trip. Of, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. You know, and I think we've managed to do that, albeit most of the time it's over Zoom. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, I think, I think it, it's just, you know, when we go on the fortnightly training, uh, you know, we have all of our, all of our staff, or at least a good chance, usually about 60. Yeah. Because we have UK and Dubai and, there's sort of weird times and people are on sales calls and stuff like that. But for the most part, we have usually have about 60 people there, right? 65 people. And, and seeing like how, and then it was really interesting when I was in the States, being told how much that meeting means to people. Yeah, it's crazy. Like, because to me, it's just, it's a meeting in my diary and I enjoy doing it, but it's me talking, mm -hmm. right? So I talk a lot. I haven't noticed. <laughs> right. And, and so like for me, I like doing that. I get to do like, hey guys, this is what we're doing. This is what we're thinking. So I can, one of the things that really, really annoyed me in the army is that I never understood the thought process of the people who are making decisions that affected my life. Yeah. And so one of the things that I've tried to do is to the best of my ability, explain what's happening and the thought process behind it. So the people who are impacted on a day-to-day -day level understand the process. Yeah, yeah. And like, that's really important to me because I know how frustrating it is to go, guys, it's so easy. Just do this. But you're looking at it through such a narrow lens. So for them to understand the lens that we're looking at it through and not always agree, but feel like they're a part of the process and that their day to day is being considered yeah. is very, very important to me. And so that, that meeting gives me an opportunity to do that and to train people. And I think the training people is very productive and, yeah. you know what I mean? But hearing from like Road and Tony and all these guys, um, how much of a morale boost that that meeting is is was very humbling, and I was like, I had no idea. Mm. I had no idea those people gave enough about me and what I bring to for that to make an effect. Yeah, you yeah. know, and it was very interesting. It was super interesting to see um, 
all the people just like line up to get that one-on-one time and how much they value just having like 15 minutes of talking just between you and that person. Yeah. Like to, it'd be like, um, if you go and meet Gary V, there's like 12,000 people trying to get a hold of him. Yeah. yeah. Obviously not on a, a different scale. Yeah. Yeah. You know, or you meet, you know, cause a lot of people idolize you, particularly in the company. They look up to you as like, I want to be as good as Matt in sales or I want to be as good as Marco in sales or yeah. I want to be as good looking as James or whatever that is. Right. Obviously. <laughs> it's childlike physically. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, it, yeah, it, it's funny how it just comes out as very, very humbling, as as you mentioned. Yeah, it, it's super interesting. And, you know, I'm incredibly lucky. I think we're incredibly lucky to be able to benefit not only like financially, but also just personally from it. Just, it's weird how it's weird what it's become. And, and I, I have no, like, we have an idea and we have a plan of where it's going to go. But what that looks like on the ground, like I, I remember when me and my wife were on our honeymoon and we were lucky enough to have our honeymoon in a beautiful, beautiful spot in Maui at the Four Seasons. And we had no money. But like, I remember there was a, a company there that had sent all their top sales reps, right, to be there. And this is like a $1,000 a night US, yeah. right? And in the cheapest room. So I had a look the other day because we're thinking about going back yeah. like that. And it It'll was be, like, it'd be fun. It was a thousand dollars a night, but like their good rooms were 4,000 a night. Their excellent rooms were 10 and their crazy rooms were 40. I was like, yeah, I was a, the whole floor. Right. <laughs> I was like, so this is an expensive hotel, beautiful four seasons. Maui, it's a stunning hotel. Right. And I remember I was sitting there and I was like talking to these guys and like, yeah, we're here. You know, we're all the top sales. There's like 20 of them, mm. them and their wives for a full week. There was an event every single night. Mm. Right. And they were in suites. This would have cost three million bucks yeah. for the week. Right. And I was like, I told Sammy, I said, I will do that one day. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I was like, like, that is a phenomenal thing to be able to do for your staff. And it's funny, like, even when, like, we do a lot of stuff for our staff. I mean, the retreat being one of them. Right. Um, obviously, not on that scale. <laughs> three Yet. times over budget. That's Yet. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I was like, just spend like, you know, 35 grand. And he's like at 50, he's like, hey man, I think we need to talk about the budget. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, like the appreciation of like what you would have felt there and going, oh, that'd be amazing. Like that's what they feel. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, oh, this is, this is amazing. I can't believe we're, like you should have seen the size of my, um, my shower. It was bigger than my room. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> And I, I got the power move on the big suite. It was great. Yeah, nice one. <laughs> um, and you're so small. I can only imagine how big it felt to you. <laughs> yeah. it, I, I used both shells. I wasted so much water in the desert. Nice. I couldn't be happier. Yeah, nice. <laughs> but um, thank you for staying to the end. We made some cool 100th episode shirts. So if you want to get them, they're limited to 100 on the uh, merch store. Link will be in the description. But for staying to the end and listening to us ramble for... 100 episodes. Um, anyone that buys one of those shirts, I think we're putting them at a discounted price compared to the regular merch as well. Uh, we'll go into the draw to win a $500 gift voucher for that merch store. So, you know, buy a shirt, you could end up with 10. Unlike Hormozy, we have everything to sell. <laughs> should um, be, that yeah. should be our line for the yeah, podcast. That be, hey, my name is Matt Ryder and I have everything, everything to sell. sell. <laughs> <laughs> that is a that is a gangster ass line. Hey, this is Alex Ramosi and I have nothing to sell you. I that love it. Great. It's absolute genius. Um, he doesn't have anything to sell you, but he will take half your business. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In in the best possible way. Yeah. Like he, I have nothing but I've never met him, but I have nothing good things to say about him. Yeah. Everyone who meets him says it Anyway, so the merch store, uh, salesniper.net, and then you go to the merch uh, drop download, and then, it, and, then it, and then it goes, takes you to the merch store. You can go there, get yourself a lovely flask, get yourself a uh, lovely shirt, some hoodies, and uh, go for it. Stuff. Make sure you get yourself a shirt. Everyone who goes into the shirt will go to win a $500 gift voucher. There may or may not be a very, very special product of a signed photo of Dan Locke where I've signed it. <laughs> uh, and there's a congruency shirt there as well. It's yeah. 497. Check it out. If, you if you're congruent, congruent you'd buy it. it. <laughs> All right, guys. And with that, thank you so much for being with us over the last hundred episodes. We look forward to the 200th episode and uh, make sure you like, subscribe, hit the notification, but all that kind of good stuff. And we will see you on the next one. Thanks guys. Bye. During our hundredth episode, we've also upgraded the lighting just like that. Yeah.
So there you go. No, that doesn't work. Lights on. <laughs> no, I got first. Lights off. <laughs> Can you not click? Oh, I just, I didn't hear a thing. Lights on. Wow. Okay. All right, guys. Well done. Um,